Everybody, my name is Brian Kelly and welcome back to Talk of the Town. We have an exciting show for you today. I'm over at the Milton Police Headquarters and actually we're in the, the museum library, I guess you could call this, right? Yes. And I'm here with Chief John King. Welcome, John. I'll give you my cold. Sorry about that. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> and, uh, and Brian O'Donnell. Brian, welcome to Talk Thank of the Town. Brian. And uh, we have a special show today. We're talking about the new Smart 911 system that Milton has subscribed to. Uh, I was just in the, this week's Milton Times, they had an article about it, and I know um, we're trying to get the word out so that people will take advantage of the service that the town has subscribed to. So I believe this was one of the last things that Chief Richard Wells instituted before he left, and now it's being implemented. And um, so uh, tell us a little bit, John, tell us a little bit about uh, the Smart 911 and uh, what you think about it. Uh, basically, this program started under Chief Wells, and honestly, he should be credited with this, not me. Uh, he started that shortly before he left and uh, planned it and uh, dealt with Brian and set it up. It basically just didn't start until after I took over. But, um, you know, I see it as a great addition to our communications room. Uh, it's a great asset to the residents. Uh, we want people to use it, uh, particularly vulnerable groups. Uh, you know, we could work with the Commission on Disability, um, children, elderly. Uh, a lot of times people have issues. Uh, I imagine the biggest concern Brian could probably elaborate on is privacy, you know, security of their information, stuff like that. But um, it's very valuable information and time is critical when an emergency happens. And by creating an account and putting your information in there, we have more information and we have it in a more timely manner. So it's just going to assist in a police, fire, ambulance response. Excellent. So it's called Smart 9-1. Uh, now, Brian O'Donnell, you're with Rave Mo Mo Mobile Safety, is the Correct. name of the company. Yeah, that's right. And Brian is a Milton resident. You probably don't know him. You probably just know his wife, Margaret. But uh, most people know him as the husband to Margaret. And, uh, but anyways, tell us, Brian, you've been involved with this company how long? So I've been there over a year now. Over a year. And uh, tell us what you like about it and, and tell us a little bit about this Smart 911 and why it's a great thing that Milton has subscribed to it. Yeah, so Smart 911 provides supplemental data and tools that helps 911 make better decisions or more informed, right? So there's a few different components of it. So one is that the uh, resident within Milton uh, can go in and create a safety po profile, uh, share information about where they live, uh, health related information so for example if some of the, if they're for example their children had uh, allergies or uh, had autism or even any mental health issues that could be shared um, that information is made available to 911 if you make a phone call from any of the numbers you have registered with that profile so for example most calls today that come to 911 probably 80% of them come from cell phones correct okay right 
if you make a call from a cell phone to 911, they don't know your address, who's calling, versus a traditional landline, right? Sure. So with Smart 911, it provides that information of who you are, your home address. You could even share your work address in there. And then also uh, information, uh, health-related information, or even information on your house. So if you had a, a bedroom in the basement, or if you had a, uh, a granny flat over the garage, I don't think he said. He was actually the granny flat over the garage. I don't think he called it that. He <laughs> called it something else. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's valuable information if there was a fire or some other emergency, right? Sure. Um, so when you call 911 from your cell phone, uh, what it does is that uh, here in the Milton Center, 911, it goes out and it searches our secure database and it sees if there's a match from that phone number. If there is, then information is displayed about you. It is secure, it's private, it's only made available to 911 if you call 911. And From that number? Yes, exactly. So what you're saying is, ordinarily if I call from home on a cell phone, because it's an emergency, I'm not thinking about what phone to grab. Yeah, exactly. And some don't have a house phone anymore. Right. So I call, even if I'm unable to speak. So I have some challenges with asthma. Yeah. So let's say I was having a bit of a breathing issue, right. I get hit 911, you would know who I, who's calling, yes. where I live, yes. and you have all that information without me even having to speak a word. Correct. Nice, yeah. nice. Okay. Now, in that case, there is another component to Smart 911 that would, uh, say you called in and uh, they determine you, they can't hear you, you're not speaking, um, or even if you say the call dropped, right mm -hmm. it often happens calls are abandoned right okay uh milton please try to call you back you don't pick up right in that scenario what they can do with smart one one is they can initiate a text conversation with you okay so there's a component of that that's leveraged a lot uh in a scenario of hard of hearing or where someone can't speak uh or domestic vi violence domestic violence uh we had a situation this week uh, where it was a suicide situation, right? Okay. What the happened? person uh, called in, or actually someone called in on their behalf, said it was a suicide situation. Um, they initiated a text conversation with them because they didn't pick up on the phone, mm -hmm. right? Often happens, person won't speak, but they were engaged them in text, kept the conversation going, found out you know where they were, their location, their name, and everything, and then they dispatched. Uh, uh, first responders to them to get them some help. Nice. So I did go online. Yes. I did register my profile and even added the cat. Good. Even added the picture of the cat. <laughs> okay, they even asked for the ID of the chip that we have. Right. And uh, they also asked about information about my vehicles too. Yes. So how would that be helpful? Say. So I would say I'll defer to John on this one. Uh, I mean, in your scenario, like if, if, if you know someone has, you know, a blue car, red car, this type of car, Toyota, what, how would you leverage that information potentially in an emergency? Uh, various ways. Um, one responded to the initial calls. Sometimes, you know, these houses don't have house numbers on them. They're trying to find a house quick. And if they're looking for, you know, 40 Highland Street, as simple as seeing a red caravan, it might help the officer spot that house gotcha. a little quicker. Um, Sometimes you know that 911 call from that cell phone, they could be in their house, they could be in the yard, they also could be in their car. Right. You know, they could have pulled in their driveway and had a medical condition and still be in mm. the car. The car could be parked out on the street. So it can right. help us. Um, that's also valuable information because it's already there and sometimes obtaining information can be difficult. So if somebody was to call and they have a family member with, you know, early stage uh, dementia or Alzheimer's and they went missing, sometimes you ask the family member, well, what car do they have? What's the plate? I, I don't remember my husband's right, plate. Right, so I log, I log my plate numbers right. in. Right, so we would already there. have it. Yeah. So even though wow. the caller made a call from that house, we can alert other units to be on the watch for, for that, that vehicle that may be somewhere else yeah. in town. So all right. there's a variety of ways. Yeah. Or even like, you know, what was it, two years ago, we had all the snow, right? I I yes. put it out of my mind. Right. <laughs> well, like, you know, if we had scenarios then where calls came in. Someone says, "Yeah, I'm on this road." Um, 
but you know, they mightn't share the color of their vehicle or whatever. It mightn't just a They might be on the way to the hospital or something, right, driving right. themselves. So if they have that information, then when they go looking for them, it helps as well, right? Okay. You can say, hey, look, in their profile, they drive a red Toyota pickup. Nice. Yeah, it was pretty simple to fill out. I would say that one concern that I could see would be um, a person that's not internet savvy. Yes. Okay, and those sometimes are more vulnerable. Maybe some of our senior citizens that, my aunt, for example, she has a flip phone. Right. Okay, and she's not gonna get a smart phone. Yeah. So I would think that, um, and, and she doesn't have internet. Right. So maybe there could be some kind of a reach out effort for some of these citizens where volunteers could actually go to their home and help set up a profile for them. Yeah, yeah. We've seen that in other communities uh, where they've gone out to uh, retirement communities uh, and centers in that community and set up a period of time where they'll help people fill out profiles, set them up and create them as well. So there's different ways to, to tackle that. I, I just think that would be, that, that's one of the issues that came to mind that some of these people that are going to be more needy of the service yeah. All right, so... Um, On that matter, Brian, just so you know, I spoke with our, our elderly affairs officer. We have an officer who handles those, and uh, we and have who, to... who is that officer? Uh, Maria Martin. Okay. And we've discussed... Um, doing just that, uh, working with the Council on Age and the Disability Commission, maybe doing a day where meet us, do this. The only thing we're thinking through, we're taking our time because we want to plan it right is, you know, while we might go to, you know, the Council on Age and, and you know, an alert aware senior, that's fine, who's pretty independent. But, you know, if we're targeting the people who maybe aren't as independent, we probably should not just include them, but maybe their family in that process. So right. that creates an extra layer in the planning process. So that's the only reason we haven't done that yet. Um, you know, I wouldn't want them to go up, create an account if that person is dependent on a family member and we don't have them involved. So mm -hmm. it creates a little logistics that we got to work through. So folks at home, if, if you have a family member or a relative like I have my aunt, maybe you can assist them and set up these accounts for them. Yeah. And it did say every six months you have to open that account and re-up it or it will go dormant. In other words, it won't be active anymore. Yeah, we yeah. want to make sure the information is accurate. So what we do is we automatically send out a notice uh, and, and to that person uh, via email or phone or text, right, to say is the information still accurate? And then people say yes sir, uh, or no. Um, you know, and that's the idea behind that is to make sure the information is accurate. So it's very easy and straightforward. So as, soon as, as long as they respond, then it will stay fresh on yeah, the system. That's correct. The other thing to be aware of as well, it, it is a national database. So people travel, right? And they call 911, right? So uh, if you travel to Quincy, uh, other towns or other cities uh, like Denver, Seattle, Atlanta, uh, as well, you've access to that information. If you're in Cambridge, you've access to that information as well. But not necessarily everywhere. It's just as, as more and more communities adopt the Correct. system, if you call and you're in that zone, yeah. your information may pop up. Exactly, exactly yeah. So there could, could be people living in Quincy that travel through Milton or work in Milton, and their information would be made available. So here's a question. I have my cell phone number registered. I travel, let's say I'm going up to Canada. Right. I'm in Vermont, right. there's a car accident or something, I hit the 911. The middle of the police show up at my house. I'm in Vermont. No, no, because that call is routed to Vermont 911. And okay. they're the ones that would have, okay. you know, if they were subscribing, would have access to this information. Okay, all right, just, I was just curious, yeah. <laughs> all right, and what other issues do you see with it, or not issues, but, um, benefits of this that you want to share with the folks in Milton? Yeah, there's a few other pieces I didn't touch on. So one is that within Smart 911, it allows schools, business owners, or anyone in the community to create a, a facility <coughs> safety profile. So the, the, what they can do is that, for example, uh, the schools here in Milton, right? Yeah. They can go in, upload floor plans, Okay, on there they can mark where AEDs are located, where hazardous materials are located. So, for example, at the high school of Milton, they would put in, like, where's the science lab, right? That's valuable information. Where's the what? Where the science oh, lab science is, lab. that okay. hazardous material, right? Okay. Uh, where exit points are. Mm -hmm. uh, they can upload um, also emergency contacts, access codes, any emergency uh, documents they want to make available there. Uh, and part of that setting up that they geofence their school, right, campus. And if a 911 call c 
comes from within that geofence, that information is v made available to the Milton police. Uh, so if I'm at the school yes. and I make a 911 call, but I'm inside that facility, yeah. that geofence information will come up, oh. even though I didn't put all that information in or anything. Correct, right. And that's valuable information, right? In an I have the Milton state. Public Schools, uh, are they participating in this? Well, that's something we got to go out to uh, uh, and work with John to go out to. Uh, uh, to reach out to the different exactly. facilities? Yeah. We, we have talked to uh, Bill Ridge and saw their facilities. It, it hasn't happened yet. They're still planning. Uh, the current one doing it would be Milton Academy. Oh, okay. Um, they have already started. Um, you know, it takes a lot of work on the facility. Oh, sure, I can imagine. Because there's more information, there's a lot more work to get it right. in there, right. so. Yeah, and we do work, actually, it's funny you say that about Milton Academy, so we work with Milton Academy already. They use our uh, emergency notification alerting system to notify parents and staff um, around different situations they have, whether it's closings or not, and that's another solution we have uh, uh, in our You platform. have a lot of solutions over at this we, company. We have a few. <laughs> yeah. Well, I noticed even on the smart profile, you're asking me where my utilities were. Yeah. I have an oil tank, where it is, what side of the house, what, where, where the shutoff of the gas is, right. water, right. and where the closest fire hydrant is. Yeah. So it was interesting. So they do gather quite a bit of information. Yeah. And um, where our bedrooms are. Right. So, you, so the fire department's not looking in the basement right. if, it's, if there's no bedroom in the basement. Yeah. So, Makes sense. so no, I, I, I like the idea. I think it's, a, I think it's fabulous. And um, especially the fact that with the mobile phone, being such a priority for people now that they have more data going that, you know, you know, because sometimes before you wouldn't know if I was calling from home. Right. Or where my home was, because mm -hmm. depending on what cell phone tower was picking up my thing. So I think it's excellent. It's, uh, it, should, it should go well. Um, I, hopefully more and more people will subscribe to it. And, um, and, um, and the fact that you can text back to the person. I think just recently in the news, there was a person that had been abducted and she was able to text. Now, I don't know if she was using the smart 911, right. but by texting to 911, she was able to get help and it saved her life. Yeah. And um, so I can see that this can be a, a valuable tool. So uh, I appreciate the fact that you convinced the town to move forward with this, Brian. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> so the folks, if you I see him on the street, you got to thank him. I should point out, and probably we didn't say this at the start, is for, for residents in the community, it is free to create a profile, right? And that's key, right? Because sometimes people think, oh, what's this going to cost me to go in and create a profile? So it is free for them to create the profile. Excellent. So, and it's not that difficult, again, but if you do have someone needs help, I suggest you, a family member, you help them set it up. And we can help them as well. And we can always help too. People are welcome to call us and we'll help them. Nice. Folks, I'm here with um, Catherine Dahl and she's also with um, Rave Mobile Safety. And um, we did a test call up in the operations room in the 911 room and you're gonna be seeing that now. So let me just play it here so you can see where we are and you can kind of talk people through what's going on here. Um, so when a 911 call is placed in Milton, that 911 call will come into the Milton 911 center and the safety profile will immediately pop up on the screen. So, so that that's what's happening here. You can see the screen. So she, the screen has popped up with your profile. Yes. So you'll see the 911 call taker has the ability to click through to see the additional information. And this information is especially helpful on 911 calls where someone maybe is very um, un unable to communicate so if they're in a victim of domestic violence deaf of hard of hearing or if they're just flustered because they're in an emergency situation this information can speak for them um and yeah i see you have a dog yes well, I mean, what's the dog's name cheyenne cheyenne okay so that was pops up also yes so you can include information about your household including your family members um, information about your household, such as bedroom location. I see she's clicking through now, and you can see you can see your picture now on the screen. Yes, and that picture is very important, especially in cases where, say, a child goes missing. We had an instance in Arkansas where a child didn't get off the school bus, and they immediately took the picture of the child and the physical description in the safety profile and dispatched it out to everyone in the field, and they located that child in 15 minutes. Right, and the person, the family, when they're in this stress situation, aren't looking for pictures. Right, exactly. On average, it takes about an hour to two hours to get a picture from a parent after a child really? goes missing. Okay, wow, that's interesting. Okay, so so there's like 
little segments she clicks on and it opens up the deeper profile. Yeah, so anyone is able to put in as much or as little information as they want. Some people may have medical details or conditions or medications they want to include. Other people may have allergies or um, um, access codes to their home, such as a gate code if people need to get into their homes. It really varies for every person. Um, and it's all information that's extremely valuable in a 911 mm. call when they're responding to the scene that helps them get there faster. But that only comes if the call is made from one of the registered phones, is that correct? Yes, we recommend one profile per household and to um, include all the phone numbers tied to that family, including mobile phones, landline, and even voice over IP. Now, I put my ch adult children on there away at university. I made a note that they're not always here. So if there is a fire, they know that they may be away at school. You know, but, but they may be there too, so they can do a, it's like a double check, you know? Right, and absolutely, we encourage people to put their home phones in as well as even their work phone numbers, because this could protect you if you work in Milton as well. And I actually put my work address in Milton, in, so it's good. So you can see um, that there's, it worked, folks. I wanted to, you know, I didn't want to take their word for it. I know John King said it worked, but I wanted to do a little fact checking. We came up here and, and we tested the system and it worked, your profile came up and, uh, it was pretty good. So I don't know how many people have actually registered in Milton onto the spot 911. I think the Milton Times mentioned a number in the paper this week. It wasn't as high as I would hope it would be. So that's why we're doing the show. So it's time to go. And where do they go to register? They register at smart911.com. That, and it's free to that's, sign up. How can we remember that? I mean, smart911.com. Mm -hmm. That's pretty easy. Yes, I hope so. <laughs> and so I actually surprised me. I thought I had to go like to a Milton site, but no, this is a national website. Yes. And um, but it automatically knows to route it through Milton if you call in Milton. Absolutely. So that's that's pretty simple. That's excellent. Well, good. Well, I, I like that example in Arkansas. And uh, any other examples you want to share before we go? We recently had an example in Virginia where a man called 911 because he was having chest pain. Um, and he was having a hard time communicating. His profile popped up with all his health information. So when first responders arrived at the scene, they knew what medications he was on and where he was located. And en route to the hospital, his heart stopped twice and they were able to resuscitate him and they credit Smart 911 with saving his life. Dang, gum it. So Smart 911 got a, got a win there. Yes, yep. We had another incident in Michigan where a man called 911 from his cell phone and it placed him right in the middle of the lake, so they knew that wasn't the case. And all they could hear was him coughing in the background, kind of like choking almost. But a safety profile popped up with his home address, which was in the mobile area. And when they got to the scene and they arrived on the scene, they saw that man's house was on fire and they were able to pull him out. And they credit Smart 911 with saving 11 minutes in response time and saving his life. Wow. So what do you think, folks, huh? Did that scare you? I hope so. <laughs> Get on there, smart911.com, fill out the, the form, and uh, you know you may never need it, and you may never call 911. But the time that you do, you're going to be glad that this information was available. Hello, everybody. I'm here with John King, Chief John King, over at the Milton Police Station. We're continuing our, our little... Uh, what do we call this? A little uh, segment about the Smart 911 program. But while we were here, we decided that maybe we would show you a little bit more around the police station. And right now, we're in the area where the bookings take place. Is that correct? Correct. Now, is that the door they come in? It says closed garage door. So that's where you bring them in on the car. In the car. Yeah, there's a double garage out there. Okay. So the doors are electronic. Dispatch opens the door. The cruiser with the prisoner would pull in, and then the doors would shut, and then. This door has a secure latch that's magnetic, and they would buzz them in. So now, so tell, tell the folks at home, uh, Chief King, what happens next as you bring in a prisoner? Essentially, when they first bring in a prisoner through that door, they come right up here to the counter. They come up to this area between these two lines, and there's handcuffs you just can't see on the other side of this counter. They would cuff the prisoner to that wall so they're secure. Um, there's two officers that stay on that side with the prisoner. Uh, a supervisor would come into this seat would log onto the computer. Essentially, they start the booking process that involves uh, advising them of them their rights, um, searching the prisoner for property, securing that property. They lock them away in the lockers below me, um, each one separately. I hope they do a better job than in Braintree. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no comment. No comment. No <laughs> comment. Um, 
basically advise them their rights. They gather all the booking information. Um, you know, they enter in the computer. You know, who the person is, their identity, what the offense is. They link it to the underlying incident that you know we were on. Um, you know, let them use the telephone, show them rights that they have. Then eventually they would bring them over. So they had, they get one phone call. Is that true? Uh, they're allowed one by law. We're pretty lenient. We give them more if they need to. Okay. All right. So we're not too uh, strict on that. You know, sometimes they want to call a family member and then call somebody else, and we let them use it really okay. anything reasonable. Um, after basically their property's been secured, the prison's been searched to make sure they have no contraband that would get into the cells with them. Mm -hmm. um, they're advised of the charges. They're brought around to this area, and two things happen here. Okay. Um, first is they basically take a camera using this. So that's where they stand right there? They stand there in front of that wall. Uh, it's a backdrop that would match for every prisoner we do. And then the other thing they do is they fingerprint everybody <laughs> electronically. Um, no, no ink? No ink. Those days are gone. So um, what do you do? Just put your hand on that? Yeah, they do it a couple series. They do an entire hand, all five at once. Right. And then uh, they do each finger individually. They'll put the finger and they basically roll it left and right. Okay. And they do each finger. That's automatically sent. Uh, through AFIS, which is an automatic fingerprint system. And depending on how busy it is, we get uh, printout automatically pops up within minutes, probably the really? most, most, maybe 15. So how big a database? Is that a nationwide database? Nationwide, yeah. So we're part of that? We are. So we'll get hits on uh, anything which will confirm either warrants, uh, not just locally, but uh, anywhere in the country. And it also will confirm whether the identity and information you have is true or whether it comes back to somebody else. Oh, if you're like given an alias or something? Correct. And now, are all towns hooked into this system or is this something that just a certain number of towns, like is this something that we had to subscribe to as a department? Um, essentially most, uh, I wouldn't say all, some smaller towns, some further away from the cities and stuff are not yet. They would use an old fingerprint card system. Yeah. They would still fingerprint the person. They would still send it in, but they would send it into the state police who essentially would feed this into the same system, check the person. Then if they got a hit, they would notify that department. You know, it wasn't Brian Kelly you had, it was John King and he's wanted in Texas. Gotcha. And, you know, sometimes that's too late because that's literally weeks later. Um, wow. But they still will notify for, you know, say now at least they know you were in this town, you were arrested at this residence, you know, they might be able to relocate you, but not always, so. Okay, because they might have been scot-free by the time that information comes Correct, out. so that's the advantage of, uh, of being system. online on this system. It's called CrossMatch. Uh, we've had it for several years, I forget what year exactly, but uh, when I first started, we did it the old-fashioned way. All right, and so now you got my fingerprints, you got my mug shot, as they say. And what's the next step? Uh, basically, it depends on whether you're going to be released or not. Either way, you're put into a cell area. If you're eligible for release, we would contact a bail commissioner who works out of the courts, and they would set bail at a minimum as a $40 fee. Uh, they could set bail at $10,000. It depends on the offense. It depends on your record, and they make a determination how likely it is you would appear in court if released. Um, if you're going to be released, you put in a cell until the bail commissioner comes. If you're not going to be released, you're held in the cell until the next court day. So, for example, today's a Friday. We would hold people till Monday morning, and then we would transport them to Quincy Court. Um, Is that pretty common? Uh, fairly common, yeah. Fairly common? Yeah. Okay. And as far as the cells, uh, there's a series of cells. There's a regular, uh, you know, we say adult male cells. There's regular holding cells. There's several of those. Uh, those are the ones in that area. Um, there's a padded cell. Uh, can be used on people that might be suicidal. We have alternatives too in terms of transporting them to hospitals and stuff, but there's a padded cell for maybe violent or suicidal people. There's separate, and by separate I mean sound and sight separate juvenile cells, and there's separate um, female cells. So how many cells total do you have? Um, there's six regular, there's a suicide padded, there's a juvenile that holds more than one, uh, can hold multiple people, and then the same with female, but it can hold more than one. And what about meals? Uh, for the weekend. We feed them. Uh, we feed them basically lunch and dinner, um, not breakfast, um, but we feed them a lunch and a dinner. Oh yeah, so you prepare the meals here? No, we go out, uh, you know, Burger King, uh, Milton Hospital food, anywhere local, basically we grab a meal and give it to them. And now, do they end up having to pay for those meals, part of their court costs, does that come back? Or? No, the town pays for that. The town has to pay for that. Yeah, meals. there's no assessment on that. 
So, so now we're in the juvenile cell? This is a juvenile cell. Uh, there are female cells for the rover, but they're the same layout. There's nothing different. Uh, you can see it's larger. It's got uh, two benches. Um, it's got a toilet, camera, uh, two cameras in this because it's a bigger cell, a light. You can also look through the window. Um, basically, whenever somebody's in here, like all the other cells, they're monitored through the communications area. So they constantly have being a watched. visual on them being watched. Um, they're checked on by hand every 15 minutes, um, regardless of what cell you're in. What do you mean by hand? A officer comes in, walks the cell block, and there's an electronic buzzer to verify you checked each door. So you have to basically buzz at the station or electronically record that we checked on them. So that's a requirement, kind of by law? That, is that time limit is not required. Uh, you are required to check on them. The time limit's a little bit flexible to communities. Uh, we have it at 15 minutes. 15 minutes. And that's the whole time that the person is here? Correct. So uh, like if somebody came in today and they're here till Monday morning, it'd be every 15 minutes for the next wow. 72 hours. It's, um, so there's, there's a lot of work involved. There is. It's you know designed for their safety, obviously. Sure. Uh, you know, people in here could be on the substance abuse. Um, they could have mental health issues. Uh, you know, it's a tough place to be, so. Especially if you have multiple people in here. Yes. We do our best to separate them as best we can. Um, mm -hmm. You know, sometimes improvising, you know what I mean, and putting them in different areas. And even the cells, we try and stagger them so they're not side by side. But this cell area, you could yell in here, you could do anything, you can't be heard from that other cell area when the doors and everything are shut. So wow. the key is to keep juveniles females and males all segregated. So they can't be communicating either? Correct. Fabricating a Correct. story or something. Okay. Very good. Excellent.